Hey there pilots, this is Dauntless Sam, and today we'll be looking at the history of the MiG-3 and its flight characteristics in War Thunder. The Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-3 was a Soviet fighter aircraft used during World War II. It was a development of the MiG-1 by the OKO of Factory No. 1 to remedy problems that had been found during the MiG-1's development and operations. It replaced the MiG-1 on the production line of Factory No. 1 on December 20th, 1940 and was built in large numbers during 1941 before Factory No. 1 was converted to build the IL-2. On June 22, 1941, at the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, some 981 were in service with the VVS, the PVO, and Naval Aviation. The MiG-3 was difficult to fly in peacetime, and much more so in combat. It had been designed for high-altitude combat, but combat over the Eastern Front was generally at lower altitudes, where it was inferior to the German Messerschmitt Bf 109 as well as most modern Soviet fighters. It was also pressed into service as a fighter bomber during the autumn of 1941, but it was equally unsuited for this. Over time, the survivors were concentrated in the PVO, where its disadvantages mattered less, the last being withdrawn from service before the end of the war. The large number of defects noted during flight testing of the MiG-1 forced Mikovyan and Gurevich to make a number of modifications to the design. Testing was done on a full-sized aircraft in the T-1 wind tunnel belonging to Central Aero and Hydrodynamics Institute to evaluate the problems and their proposed solutions. The first aircraft to see all of these changes applied was the fourth prototype of the I-200. It first flew on the 29th of October, 1940, and was approved for production after passing its state acceptance trials. The first MiG-3, as the improved aircraft was named on December 9th, was completed on December 20th of 1940, and another 20 were delivered by the end of the year. State acceptance testing of two production aircraft was conducted between the 27th of January and the 26th of February of 1941. They were found to be over 250 kilograms heavier than the MiG-1, which reduced maneuverability and field performance. Time to 5,000 meters decreased by over a minute, and the service ceiling proved to be 500 meters less. The MiG-3 was faster at sea level and at height. While the ranges reached by both aircraft were farther than that of the older aircraft, they were still less than the 1,000 kilometers required. Mikoyan and Gurevich protested against the range results as their calculations showed that the MiG-3 could reach 1,010 kilometers based on a specific fuel consumption of 0.46 kilograms per kilometer. During the state acceptance trials, the SFC was 0.48 kilograms per kilometer, but the operational trials conducted earlier showed an SFC of 0.38 kilograms per kilometer. They blamed the deficiency on a failure to use an altitude correction, and that the engines had not been properly adjusted. They went as far as arranging for two more flights between Leningrad and Moscow to prove the MiG-3 could fly a thousand kilometers. Two production aircraft were flown to ranges of 1,100 kilometers and 971 kilometers, flying at 90% of maximum speed and in an altitude of 7,300 meters contradicting the report of the NII VVS. Despite the teething problems with the MiG-3 in 1941, one of the aircraft's designers, Gurevich, was awarded with the State Stalin Prize for his contribution to Soviet aviation. A number of reports had been received about poor quality aircraft received by the regiments, which pointed directly at the NII VVS, as it was responsible for monitoring the quality of the aircraft delivered to the VVS. The MiG-3's top speed of 640 kilometers an hour at 7,200 meters was faster than that of the 615 kilometer per hour German Messerschmitt Bf 109 F2 in service at the beginning of 1941, and the British Supermarine Spitfire 5's 603 kilometers per hour. At lower altitudes, the MiG's speed advantage disappeared, as its maximum speed at sea level was only 505 kilometers per hour while the BF-109 F-2 could do 515 km per hour, and unfortunately for the MiG-3 and its pilots, aerial combat over the Eastern Front generally took place at a low and medium altitudes where it had no speed advantage. 
The MiG's loaded weight of 3,350 kilograms was greater than that of the BF-109 F-2's 2,728 kilograms, and it was less maneuverable in the horizontal plane than the BF-109 due to its higher wing loading. This lack of maneuverability was exacerbated by the MiG-3's poor climb performance, its instability at high speeds, and its weak armament. The MiG-3's standard armament was one 12.7mm UBS machine gun and two 7.62mm machine guns. This was a rather light armament by international standards. For example, most versions of the German Messerschmitt BF-109 that it encountered were equipped with one 20mm autocannon and two 7.92mm machine guns. To remedy this problem, 821 aircraft were built with one 12.7mm UBK machine gun in a pod under each wing in the mid-1941. This lowered its speed by about 20 kilometers an hour at all altitudes, which was unpopular with the pilots, some of whom removed the pods. 100 aircraft were equipped with a pair of UBS machine guns in lieu of the other machine guns of the time. Another 215 aircraft also had just the UBS machine guns, but were fitted to carry six RS-82 rockets. A total of 72 aircraft mounted a pair of 20mm cannons. A wide variety of armaments were experimented with by various units at the request of their pilots or to make up shortages. The NCAP, or People's Ministry of the Aircraft Industry, announced its 1941 production plan on December 9, 1940. Factory number one would be required to build a total of 3,500 aircraft in 1941. Factory number 43 in Kiev would begin the construction of the MiG-3 and complete 100 aircraft by the end of the year, and factory number 21 would start to plan construction of an upgraded version of the MiG-3, although this last program was canceled shortly afterwards. 140 were delivered in January 1941, and factory number one was on pace to exceed its quota with 496 delivered in July, 562 in August, and 450 in September. In October, the German advance on Moscow forced the factory and its OKO to evacuate, where production resumed under atrocious conditions. However, shortly afterwards, Stalin sent a telegram to the directors of the plants building the IL-2 and the MiG-3, demanding more IL-2 production. Thus, the production of the MiG-3 was terminated in favor of the IL-2, except for 30 aircraft built in 1942 from spare parts. One additional reason for cancellation of the MiG-3 was that its engine was closely related to the AM-38 used by the IL-2, and production could be relatively easily be switched from one to the other. However, there is evidence that the MiG-3 production at Factory 1 was already planned to be reduced from an in-cap order of August 27th that required the factory to produce 420 fighters in September, declining to 100 in December, with IL-2 production ramping up to 250 in December while the former aircraft repair plant was to be transferred to the in-cap in Factory Number 165 and begin production of MiG-3s. The German advance, however, disrupted these plans for Factory 165, and it never produced a single MiG-3. MiG-3s were delivered to frontline fighter regiments beginning in the spring of 1941, and proved to be a handful for pilots accustomed to the lower performance in docile Polykarpov I-152 and I-153 biplanes, and the Polykarpov I-16 monoplane. Even after the extensive modifications made to the MiG-3 in comparison to the MiG-1, it was still tricky and demanding to fly. Many fighter regiments were not diligent in training their pilots to handle the MiG-3 as it flew very differently than the older fighters, and the rapid pace of deliveries aggravated things so that many units had more MiGs than they had trained pilots to fly them by the time of Operation Barbosa. On the 1st of June, 1941, 1,029 MiG-3s were on strength but there were only 494 trained pilots. In contrast to the untrained pilots of the 31st Fighter Regiment, those of the 4th Fighter Regiment were able to claim three German high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft shot down before the war broke out in June 1941. However, high-altitude combat of this sort was to prove to be uncommon on the Eastern Front, 
where most air-to-air -air engagements were at altitudes well below 5,000 meters. At these sorts of altitudes, the MiG-3 was outclassed by the BF-109 in all respects, but also by other modern Soviet fighters like the Yak-1. Furthermore, the shortage of ground attack aircraft in 1941 forced it into that role as well, for which it was totally unsuited. On June 22, 1941, most MiG-3s and MiG-1s were in the border military districts of the Soviet Union. The Leningrad Military District had 164, 135 were in the Baltic Military District, 233 in the Western Special Military District, 190 in the Kiev Military District, and 195 in the Odessa Military District, for a total of 917 on hand of which only 81 were non-operational. An additional 64 MiGs were assigned to naval aviation, 38 in the Air Force of the Baltic Fleet, and 26 in the Air Force of the Black Sea Fleet. In War Thunder, there are three versions of the MiG-3, the MiG-3-15, the MiG-3-15BK, and the MiG-3-34. All three are Tier 2 and a battle rating of 1.7, 2.3, and 2.7 respectively. The MiG-315 has a maximum speed of 589 km an hour, a turn time of 18.9 seconds, and a rate of climb of 10.9 meters per second. It is armed with two 7.62 Shikaz machine guns with 1500 rounds and a default reload time of 15 seconds as well as a 12.7 mm Burizen UB machine gun with 300 rounds and a default reload time of 20 seconds. The MiG-315BK has a maximum speed of 592 km an hour, a turn time of 18.5 seconds, and a rate of climb of 16 meters per second. It is armed with two 7.62 mm Shikaz machine guns with 1500 rounds, and a default reload time of 15 seconds, as well as three 12.7 mm Berezin UB machine guns with 600 rounds, and a default reload time of 20 seconds. The MiG-334 has a maximum speed of 612 km an hour, a turn time of 22 seconds, and a rate of climb of 16 meters per second. It is armed with two 20mm Shavak cannons with 200 rounds and a default reload time of 40 seconds. Unlike some Russian aircraft, the MiG-3 is a pure energy fighter. Boom and zoom tactics are the order of the day for all three of these aircraft. It has a relatively high speed for the tier, and it is also very stable in a dive. Make sure to aim carefully, as the armament of these planes can be a little underwhelming and lack punch. Be sure to keep enemies off your tail, as it is the weakest part of your aircraft. It won't take much to shear the tail off the rest of your plane. I hope that this information has proved helpful. If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel and check out the links in the description. If you think anyone else would like this video, don't be afraid to share it. This is Dauntless Sam. Thanks for watching.